Greetings, channel. Today we kick off what will be the future of the channel, lures and guides, but mostly it's going to be on lore. Today's video is going to be about the surviving members of the Oricon Council. We might even go ahead and say the 107 still lives, but of course it will be in a different form. Now the reason why I say this is due to what we know about the Oricon themselves, their elusiveness, their powers, their ability to transcend this realm. So which knowledge am I referring to? I'm talking about nothing other than the origins of duality, and I would like to begin by using this beautiful art piece by Kevin Glintz. While it shows the father conversing with the daughter, it also reveals more about the separation of soul and matter. When we play the sacrifice quest, Yoteno is exposed to the truth of the universe, the fact that nothing exists in once, there's always two. Now I know that may sound a little bit cliche or sound a little bit crazy, but Ballas recorded that before the vain faith, the empire itself lives by the rules that acknowledge the existence of the other. They came to understanding that all things are of two parts, positives must have a negative, the mind is annexed by the body, consciousness by matter even to the existence of two realities. So what does this picture have to do with this? What is the connection between both of them? It is recorded that once the machines were exposed to the energy of the void during their travel, they became aware of their own presence and existence. They began to see the universe in its entirety. They also, like their creators, became aware of their own duality. They become aware of the existence of the alter ego. It is evident that the Orokin became gods and also created machines in their own image, which is what we see in the sentience. These machines also have their own personalities, which is quite synonymous to that of their Orokin masters. They also have the ability to own each skill specific to each Orokin. The sentients began to learn of their Orokin half, realized its flaws, and of course, as a result of that, they strive to absorb or remove their Orokin half from existence, thus giving the universe its perfect ruler, which of course, in this case, will become the sentient. Margulis is to Nata as Balas is to Hon Hao. So what comes next? The answer to that is going to be something that we found quite interesting in the Chimera Prologue. The best from every creation will become one with the sentient. The sentient now possess the ability to transform matter, and because the Orokin now sees one's existence as spiritual, the transformation is to become the matter to the Orokin consciousness. The sentient will become the body that holds the mind of the Orokin. The transformation of Ballas in what we saw in the Chimera Prologue is the evidence of that transcendence of man into machine. Slowly and in time, Ballas will become a full-fledged sentient, just like his former masters. At least, that is where this theory leads. With this, does it mean the entire Oregon faction died when the Tenos attacked the Oregon? Because at this point, we can believe the answer is no. The Tenos only saw what seemed to be the beginning of the end. If the sentients do possess the ability to transform flesh into machine, then this is going to be the reason why there were no bodies or remains of the Orokin even after all those battles, even after those thousands of years. There was no evidence of a battle going on other than ruins. Even if the flesh rots, the bones should remain. This is one of the questions that I have come to ask myself and of course I'm sure a lot of people within the Warframe community would ask the same question. Is it possible that the sentients collected all the bodies of the Oregon after the Tenos defeated them and before they were completely dead, the sentient did something to that body? And of course the ghosts that we see on the Oregon Moon Talset or the bodies of Orokin that were either secluded and never collected in different areas. There are remains of sentience on the plains, on several planets. We see their bones scattered all around the place. 
the battle torn system is even there we have evidence of that but for some reason there is no flesh or bone remaining of the organ this is where i was able to confirm that the sentience also robbed the oricon of what would have been their perfect death they turn them all into sentient and that is why there are no bodies or bones in the main halls just rubbles gold and smoke next time we will look at other possibilities for the oricon's honored seven and of course we also look at what could have happened to the entire empire thanks for watching this video hope you enjoyed and as always it's ds signing out i'll see you in the next lore video